But the one thing, mentioned it with Miami, mm -hmm. that prohibits some development is often this, um, this Saharan dust. And yeah. it's, um, well, it's returned again this year. Yeah, it has. It has. Every year you can expect it for the most part. But yeah. that dense plume of dust, we can see it here on satellite, right? It actually can be can be quite vibrant on satellite, but it, it originates in the Sahara. And this time of year, it often blows across the Atlantic, inhibiting, as Stephen mentioned, tropical development. But sometimes it can reach the southeastern coast of the U.S. So let's Like take it a, has, right? Like it has, like it's doing. <laughs> let's take a closer look at it. Why not? Louisiana State University expert climatologist Paul Miller joining us now to to dive into the dust, the issue of the dust. It comes from the Sahara Desert. Talk a little bit more about this phenomenon, right? Because it's taking a trek across the Atlantic away from northern Africa. What stirs up all the dust to begin with? Yeah, so this is really an astonishing phenomenon for most people, right? You see you see sort of this brown haze to the sky, and you think, what's that? And you find out that, oh, my gosh, this has come all the way from Africa, and it's been blown across the Atlantic Ocean into the Gulf of America, and now it's here in the southeast U.S. And this really originates up to seven, ten days earlier over the Sahara Desert or the neighboring regions that we'll call the Sahel. And you can have these thunderstorms that because the, the soil is so loosely held together, right, there's very little moisture in the soil in these areas, that thunderstorm outflow winds can generate sort of these vast clouds of dust that then get blown by our trade winds, these kind of east to west flowing uh, uh, circulation pattern that you were sort of highlighting a few minutes ago towards the east coast of the U.S. It's very cool because we're able to see it on satellite imagery, Paul. When we look at this dust, and I, I will be honest, first covering this, it was years ago when I was working in Houston, I, I think I might have accidentally said that it was sand that was in the atmosphere. Is, is there sand or what is consisted of this dust? And I only ask because some of that can mix down at the surface and maybe it could serve as an irritant, but what's the composition of what we call dust? Yeah, so when you're over the Sahara Desert, right, and you're first stirring up this dust, as we call it, there's a whole host of uh, particulate sizes mixed in there. Now, the heaviest of those are going to be the first to fall out, uh, basically meaning they're going to be the first to hit the surface because they're heavy and it takes really strong winds in order to keep them suspended. So the dust that what we call dust tends uh, to be much smaller by the time it makes it over to, uh, you know, the Gulf of America and the places that we're monitoring it now. And so that's really the concern from a health perspective that you mentioned is that you have these fine particulates that can be respiratory irritants and can cause problems for sensitive groups. That was the nicest way of him saying, yes, I was wrong initially when I said sand because <laughs> it is not sand. <laughs> that's why but it's called I could see how you, I, right? You yeah. think desert, you think sand. Yeah. And I always imagined, you know, when the Lion King um, Simba sits mm -hmm. down and all the dust pushes yeah. up, that's yeah. what's happening, right? It's getting sent off across the Atlantic. I do this a lot. I, I go off into tangents. But, <laughs> you know, it is really fascinating because it is something we start to see in June. It can take us into August, and it can really mm -hmm. have a direct impact on the, the hurricane season. And when we talk about it making it to the surface, we notice out of Miami, they've been discussing the, the dust and how that could also inhibit some of the rain activity. Uh, and so dusty cars, maybe, for today. Maybe um, if we do get rain, some of that dust gets transported down to the surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, so the dust can sort of serve as a seed for, for a, a raindrop or a cloud droplet. And so we call that wet deposition, basically, that, you know, it sort of gets uh, uh, sequestered within a, you know, rain droplet and then brought to the surface that way. Uh, we typically tend to see sort of even in the absence of rain, a general descending motion of this Saharan air layer uh, on its journey across the Atlantic. So normally it's relatively close to the surface uh, by the time it gets to our part of the world to begin with. But you mix in some clouds and some rain and then that's going to help bring that dust. Uh, to, to the actual Earth's surface. All right, Paul, uh, we are running out of time, but I, I, I do want to just make sure to get this in. The dust eventually settles, and you had mentioned mm -hmm. in ways the monsoon in Africa that kicks up some of this dust. Uh, what's responsible for the dust settling? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, eventually we just sort of run into these sort of mid-latitude weather systems that dust is going to get dispersed. The smaller particles are going to take longer to settle, but mm. gravity is going to win out eventually. And so that dust is always going to make its way after a long time uh, to the surface. Uh, gravity always wins out. <laughs> I told you, gravity always wins. I feel it in my face. Yeah, in yeah. more ways. Exactly. That's yeah. where I was going That's as right. well. Well, we appreciate your time. Louisiana State University expert climatologist Paul Miller. Thank you. We'll continue in the meantime to watch the dust, especially via satellite. Thank you.